Hey everyone, my name is Olaf and today we're going to make this awesome spiral animation in Blender. It's going to be quick and easy, so let's get started. Okay, so you want to start off by switching to Cycle Render, so click Cycle Render, and then select right click the lamp, click X to delete. Then you want to go into Create and Add a Plane, click G Set to grab it on the set axis, and this is going to be our emitter. Okay, so click G set again to grab a little bit upwards, S to scale, and we're going to go into the particle settings and add some particles. Okay, so click new. And as you can see now, it has some particles, but we, we're going to change it to make the cube into the particle. So click object, and then make the cube the object, or the dupli object. Increase the size as you want, but you can just copy my settings. And if we click play now, you can see cubes falling down. Okay, so click pause. And we're going to scroll up and make the animation last for 250 frames, which is the animation we're going to make today. And I'm also going to move the cube to another layer, so click M and then select the layer you want to move it to. Okay, so if you go back now, I'm going to add something called um, under force field, it's called curve guide, which is going to guide all the uh, cubes falling down out of the particle emitter. So click G set to grab down the z-axis and now we're going to edit the um, curve guide and um, guide all the cubes falling out of the emitter. Okay, so select one of them and click G to grab it. I'm going to grab it on the y-axis a little bit and I'm going to make a spiral, so I'm going to make the spiral shape and it's going to be a downward spiral so you want it to use G and G set a lot to make the spiral shape and obviously you can make the shape you, you want and it doesn't have to be a spiral but in this tutorial I'm going to show you how to make a spiral and now we need to extrude so click E to extrude so that we get more parts into our guide I'm going to extrude again, E to extrude and E to extrude again and to look around the scene you use the middle mouse button if you didn't know Okay, so E again, and E again to extrude, just try to make a downward spiral shape. And let's make a last one, E, and this is going to be the end of the spiral. So let's go back to object mode and just test it out. Now obviously it doesn't work that good because the guide isn't connected close enough to the emitter to so kind of messes up the animation. So we need to pause this animation and move the guide a little bit upwards. So click pause, click S to scale the guide. And I also wanted to make the origin to the guide to geometry. Okay, so click G to grab it and make sure to grab it just below the uh, emitter. And as you can see now, it actually follows the guide, which makes a cool animation. So now we can start adding all the materials and all the niceness to the animation. And before I start adding the lighting, I want to set up a basic like wall and floor for this uh, animation. So I'm going to add a mesh and it's going to be a plane. So click S to scale it up. And then you want to click S to scale it up even more. And I'm going to grab it a little bit downwards, so G set to grab it on the set axis. And then I want to go into the edit mode and click E to extrude. It's going to be the walls. Then click X to delete and delete the face. Okay, so now let's go back to object mode. And I'm going to add the lighting. 
and I was at three planes and I make it into a three point lighting using emission. So click R to rotate, G to grab, and then S to scale it up. And R again to rotate, G to grab, S to scale, and I'm gonna add a material and it's going to be an emission material. So go into a emission. And then you want to increase the strength to let's say about seven. Then you want to go into the top view. So numpad seven to go into the top view. And you're going to duplicate it. So click Shift D to duplicate. Then I click R, then set to rotate it on the set axis. Click S to scale it down. This is going to be the second largest light. Shift D again. And then click R set to rotate it on the set axis. And scale it down even more because this is the backlight and it's supposed to be smaller. Okay, numpad zero to go into the camera. Click Shift F to go into the fly cam mode. And you're going to move around with W. A, S, and D, just like in a video game. And then just move around in the scene until you have the position you want to have for the finished animation. So I think this is starting to look good. And when you have the scene you want, you just left click to confirm. Okay, so let's add a material and just make sure the emitter is transparent. So scroll to the top and make it transparent so that you can see the plane. And the way to add materials for the cube itself is to go into the other layer and add a material for the like the duplicate duplicated cube. So select it, right click and then use nodes. Go back again see how it looks just wait a little bit there we go and then you want to add a color so add whatever color you want I would like to add kind of a orange color for this scene but you can obviously make whatever color you want in your final animation doesn't really matter for this tutorial at all and you can also mess around with different types of materials for example, you can have a glossy material, and I'm going to have a glossy material for the floor and the walls, because it kind of looks cooler. And then you can add whatever color you want for the floor. It's obviously going to look cooler if you make give it another color than just a plain white. And I usually like to make it a little bit dark. And I think I like this. Believe it or not, we're actually almost finished with the tutorial now, so I'm just going to make some final adjustments to the scene before I start rendering the animation. So you can, for example, uh, increase the number of cubes. You can also increase the size of the cubes, as well as uh, make the sizes random, which you can see right below, so that the cubes have different sizes, which is also going to look real cool in your animation. Just make sure they're not too big so that they kind of go into each other. But you can try out different sizes. Shift D to go into rendered mode to see how it looks when it's rendered. And I'm going to try a different material for the uh, cubes and see how that, how that looks. In the final animation I actually just use diffuse. But you can try out for example glossy to make the cubes glossier. And try, for example, kind of a golden color for your cubes. But as I said, you can try whatever you want. I'm actually going to speed up this part because I looked through a lot of different combinations of roughness and color. But it obviously doesn't matter. You can just use whatever color you want. But I ended up with this color here. And then I went back to solid mode. Let's just see how it looks fully animated. Let's see material. And as you can see, the animation works just fine. It has a really cool effect. So I'm happy with this and I'm going to start rendering it. 
And before we start rendering, we need to go up to the camera settings, increase the resolution quality to 100%, find a place you want to save it in output. So just find a folder, you can save it in whatever folder you want. And you need to save it as PNG first and then convert it into MP4. Make the samples as high as you want, that is going to increase the quality of the render. And then you just click animation when you want to animate it. After about 20 hours of rendering, this is what it looks like. I hope you enjoyed the tutorial and thanks for watching.